Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games, my name is Simon, today we're looking at the game Mountain Goats. Now, this is by Stefan Risthaus, one of my favourite designers of a game called Santa Domingo, please check that out, the implementation of the game Vispy. Four different players can play, so you can play this as two to four players, it's a dice rolling game, you're trying to get up a mountain and get the most points. Now, this game I've been lent, it was initially on Kickstarter, we have various mountains, I think actually it's best we stick over this way. If you're watching this as a short, please make sure you watch the full video over on YouTube as well. And also make sure you like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for other videos. This is going in the Amass Games playlist, the Family Rate playlist. And I think it might even be another one I'm thinking of too. I'll also be going the Dice Distancing playlist because I'll be doing a Dice Distancing video. See how far dice roll and whether or not you'll need a dice tray. Now, as you can see, it takes up quite a bit of space. I have zoomed out to do this. And as you can see, there's a certain amount on the bottom tile as to where they go. There's even an order, although I haven't really necessarily bothered with where you choose to place things out. But this is a game, as I said, trying to get the most points, getting your goats up the mountain based on various die rolls. And if you've seen other games such as Can't Stop, you'll recognise the fact that whatever you roll, you are going to pair up and add the values of your dice together to get to where you want to get to. Now, any comments, like I said, always the best on YouTube. Make sure you check out the description as well to see how you can support the channel by Patreon. Also, check out Instagram, where there's over 3,000 posts, 4,000 followers at the time of recording, and head through to see more pictures of this. Now, you're also going to be placing out various tokens. When you reach the top of the mountain, you're going to get points. And each time you hit the top, you're going to get one of these tokens. The game ends when someone has uh, actually depleted, or in total, people have depleted three of these six different mountain peaks, or when everybody has taken one of, uh, basically completing one of each of the mountain peaks. So there's two different ways the game can end. So just whilst I'm setting this up, as you can see, there's a fair amount set up. I do like the art, it's very nice and colorful. The, the wooden meeples representing the goats are very nice too. And as you can see, I've pretty much set everything up now. The only thing you can't see it in shot is presently the five and the six. I'm gonna start rolling dice down and see Everybody's going to take a colour. I've played at most colours, I think, so far. So you're going to chuck out a goat next to each of these spaces. And here we go. This is also going to get mentioned in the podcast, so make sure you follow along and tell me any thoughts on that as well. Okay, and again, there are occasionally competitions, but are time-sensitive via link tree. So there we go. Off on shot, you can just about see we have a goat down there. So I'm down here, for example. I will chuck out some other things at the moment. I won't bother getting out the five and the six tokens, as I said. So we're going to have four dice. They are blue, and they represent movement. Movement on how far these mountain goats can go, based on maybe, let's say, the severity of this slope. So you're going to roll your dice. I'm going to go first, and I, either I can move a six, and then I can move in total an eight, or I can move a five, and then move a nine, or just move a six. You can obviously get more points the way you go up, so the best thing for me probably is to move a six and an, an eight. So I'll move maybe a six, and maybe I'll move an eight. Then something else goes, and let's say they've rolled, and let's say playing with red. Now I've got some very low dice here. You could bring out just a seven. That's all they're going to get out. So now they are up higher. And now, for example, just imagine playing as a two. I have reached the top. Then, of course, well, let's say I'm using this one. I'll take this token, again, until they'll disappear. And if they all disappear, then you're not going to get anything. And if I now roll another eight on the next turn, then I'll be getting more of these. So I could roll two fours, and let's say a five and a three. Then I'll get two more of these tokens. However, if red was behind me and they happen to roll, let's say, you know, a six and a two, whatever it is, not only do they get eight points, so they take one of these tokens, I get all the way back to the bottom, so they've butted me off. So therefore, you've got to think about pushing your luck. Where do you want to go? I did mention if you're the first to get one of the tokens, each of them, you get 15 points. Second gets 12, third gets nine, and fourth gets six points. Um, I like the, the maths of it, like with Can't Stop. The fact that you could be rolling four ones, and I had some terrible dice rolls before, uh, kind of puts it off a bit for me though. So there's that to be said for it. Uh, it is fairly big. I don't think they need such a big pieces of card for these spaces. I know you can get four goats on them, but I still think you know it, it doesn't have to be as big as it is, but it's not a problem. It's just a bit big. And in fact, uh, it is a small box. And the small box is tr slightly tricky just to cram everything back in. Like I said, lovely mountain goats. My rating for this, it's somewhere between a six and a seven, with my average rating being a, a 6.4 on rounded at time of recording. It's enjoyable, it's quick. Uh, it says 30 minutes or 20 minutes on the box. 
probably a bit longer typically because you can't necessarily predict what you're gonna get with your rolls. Again, it is luck dependent. Yes, you have some options to like, mitigate them in terms of how you wanna manipulate them. You might get a six and three ones and you might wanna get your six rather than getting a nine because combining them all together isn't very useful. Now, as to how it was put away before, I actually recommend putting away this way instead because then it's been quicker to play away, pack it away. I played this, uh, as I said, by various player counts as well. Played it as a four, played it as a three, including a teach though, you are looking closer to about an hour in duration. And uh, that is obviously for that first game, but it isn't because of this setup. It's not a huge setup, as you can see, I've managed to in under five minutes, not only set up and explain the game and review it and pack it away. It's just something to be aware of, as I said, You've got to be aware that you have few of these, obviously few of the squares to go to for nine and 10, which makes sense because it's harder to hit on a nine and 10. And obviously if you hit something higher than you know, 10, if you happen to hit something like a, uh, I don't know, let's say you hit lots of sixes, then you're just gonna move up the sixes instead, which of course is very beneficial. And of course, once those all go, that's it. So there we go, that is the review. I will have to set up playing with you for Mountain Goats. Again, any questions I always do, let me know. And like I said, daily videos the last few years, more on their way. Thanks very much for watching, but for now, Mountain Goats, back to the table.